Hey everybody, my name is Matthew Sambanis. I'm a certified public accountant. My firm is based in Long Island, New York. And in today's video, we are going to discuss the Federal Reserve meeting today, what I believe comes next. We're also going to discuss the inflation report from today, and we're also going to discuss how to profit from the coming inflation fiasco. If you're into economics, finance, making money, and other things of that nature, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It means the world to me. So without further ado, let's get rocking and rolling. A uh, very basic economic concept I'd like to explain is high rates uh, equals low inflation. Low rates, <laughs> which we had for year, 20 years, equals uh, high inflation. And medium rates equal medium inflation, right? So high, low, low, high, very simple. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. And for whatever reason, the Federal Reserve and the smartest people... Allegedly, the smartest people in the country don't understand it. Um, and what I'd also like to point out is that inflation is bad. Um, how do you mean inflation is bad? And why is a 2% target stupid? Because do you want to pay more at the register or do you want to pay less? Of course, you want to pay less. Do you want to pay $50,000 for a new car or a used car? Or do you want to pay 30000 Of course, you want to pay 30000 Do you want to spend... You know, let's say the Federal Reserve targets their 2% inflation and prices increase by 2% every year. Do you prefer to pay $100 for a new TV or $102 and then, you know, $103.59, whatever the math is, for 2% after that? You want to pay lower, right? So anyway, the Federal Reserve held interest rates steady at their current range of 5.25% to 5.5% but revised its outlook for rate cuts to just one in 2024. Central bank policymakers noted there has been modest further progress towards its 2% inflation objective. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first off, the inflation numbers they used are cooked. Um, anything from the government, more or less anything from the government is cooked. And you're never going to get an honest number, including like the jobs report that we had the other day, which the Jerome, Jerome Powell, uh, the Federal Reserve chairman, did actually discuss. And we'll go into a little further. But anyway, he said, too soon to tell if Fed policy is sufficiently restrictive. Um, central bankers are still waiting to see sufficient progress. He added, well, again, if they looked at the Fed, if they looked at the, um, inflation chart from today, they would know that it's not <laughs> sufficient progress being made, uh, that they have not come in anywhere near their 2% numbers that coming in at 2.3% or I'm sorry, 3.3% annual rate is a huge miss, you know, um, the question of whether it's sufficiently restrictive is going to be one we know over time. No, I've been saying for the last year since I started this YouTube channel that they're wrong. Inflation is going to continue. It's going to continue to get worse. And even if they get it to go down, it's going to be temporary and it's going to shoot up like a slingshot. And that's so far what's happened. It's not gone down sufficiently. It's not going to go down sufficiently. And the reason is, is they need to raise interest rates higher. So again, higher interest rates equals lower inflation. And the caveat to that is people think, hey, if we had lower interest rates like 2 3%, I could go get a mortgage. The problem with that is the cost of everything else is going to skyrocket back up, uh, including the price of the house. <laughs> so anyway, um, then he went on to say, I think the evidence is pretty clear that policy is restrictive and is having, you know, the effects that we would hope for. They're not because interest rates aren't 2%. And we're going to get further into that because it was supposed to average 2%, right? Um, the other thing that I am, I'm not even going to delve into it because I'm just going to get angry over it is, you know, the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell said, it's unclear why the sentiment of every American is so sour on the economy because the economy is absolutely terrible. Everybody is in their debt, in debt up to their eyeballs. And the price of everything keeps on growing, going up, right? So case in point, uh, at the height, you know, we were at 9% inflation. Now we're at 5% inflation. So instead of, you know, but prices have not gone down. We haven't had deflation. And the idea of the Federal Reserve was to average 2% inflation. And they did a such a great job that they went way above it, you know, and their 9% is absolute BS. You know, we know that the price of stuff have 
doubled and tripled and averaged probably 30, 40% per year, not 8, 9% or 3, 4, 5%. Anyway, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said no one on the committee has interest rate hikes in their base case. <laughs> so uh, again, interest is inflation is too high, interest rates are too low, and they're talking about cutting it. And even if they don't cut it, interest rates... Uh, inflation is still going to be too high because interest rates are, are, you know, this is just basic economics 101. And I can't even believe that I have to have this conversation, no less with the microphone or you, the person, which by the way, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you haven't noticed, I talk freehand off of my notes or over, off of the articles that I printed out. So if I stutter or stammer, I apologize. I'm just speaking freely. I don't have a script. Uh, you know, I feel that if you don't know what you're talking about and you can't talk about it freely and you have to type it up, you have no business talking about it. So anyway, Federal Reserve Jerome Powell said the recent strong jobs data might be slightly overstated. You know, for the last 13 months, I believe straight, they've come out and revised the jobs numbers down every month. Every month, the following month, they revise the job numbers down. Of course, they're overstated. And why? Because of the birth-death model. Um, and what is the birth-death model? Well, they look at the jobs, and then they say how many new companies were started up uh, that created new jobs but haven't hit the jobs numbers yet. And, uh, you know, a bunch of government analysts uh, make it up and probably to cook the books to make the jobs look strong because those numbers get revised down every month. And it's not probably, it's factually. I'm sorry, I should have said factually. So, and, you know, case in point, um, thankfully my company has grown. Um, my firm's grown. Uh, it's continued to grow every year. It's And it's growing tremendously this year as well. And one thing that we do a lot of is form a lot of corporations. And now that I'm thinking about it, and I would have to go back and actually do, uh, you know, an, an analysis. But I feel like year to date, and I could be wrong, uh, but I feel like we haven't formed as many corporations as we normally do. You know, um, you know, our revenues are up, our client base is up, but in terms of actual entity formation, that's kind of been down. Um, so. You know, the government's birth death model is off and, you know, and wrong and just a flat out lie to put it nicely. Anyway, let's move along. Federal Reserve Jerome, Federal Chair Jerome Powell said the central banks do not have the confidence to start lowering interest rates. Then why are you talking about lowering interest rates? And not only that, if you don't have the confidence, then wouldn't you want to raise interest rates? to make sure you do eventually have the confidence. Why don't you want to raise interest rates? And not for nothing, raising it by 0.25%, it's not going to do much. And if you're that worried about crashing the economy, obviously the stock market hasn't crashed. The real economy has gone to hell, but the rich people keep on getting richer and richer. And you know what? Uh, not that I'm uh, super rich, but my portfolio was up very nicely today. And you know, I own a bunch of gold stocks and they didn't perform too well, but luckily I'm diversified and my portfolio did go up. Anyway, Inflation data this year has not given the Federal Reserve's greater confidence that it's moving close to the 2% goal. Again, it's not supposed to be a 2% goal. It's supposed to average that. And of course, they can't have deflation because that mean price, that would mean prices are going down. But here's what's really going to happen, in my opinion. Everything's going to crash. This is going to blow up. We're seeing that happen now. The prices are naturally going down on their own. And eventually, that will happen in the broader market. House prices are going to have to go down in order for them to get sold. Uh, the cars are going down, uh, used cars are going down, and other things are going to have to go down, just like the food's been going down because people can't afford it. So yes, we're suffering from inflation. Yes, it's probably going to get worse, but at some point, everything's got to crack, and we're seeing the cracks in the foundation now, and that's just going to get bigger and bigger until we have a full-on meltdown. And you know what? It's well-deserved. We've lived beyond our means. We've taken out more and more debt. We've been crushed by, you know, stagnant wages and high prices. And, you know, when you can, when you have so much money, you can only afford so much stuff and you have to cut out other stuff. And, you know, in order to make stuff happen, prices are going to have to go down for other companies to stay in business. So anyway, higher prices are showing signs of easing based on recent readings, Powell says. Um, then he goes on, inflation has eased substantially, but still too high. Yes, it's way too high. We need deflation. We want lower prices. Common sense. Uh, 
Federal Reserve holds interest rates, predicts one rate cut this year. So again, why are they cutting rates if inflation is too high and they're not confident they can get it down to the number that they want to get it down to? Um, so that's what I wanted to cover from the meeting today that the Federal Reserve had. And next up, let's review the inflation breakdown for May 2024 in one chart. Uh, thank you if you're still watching, by the way. Inflation pulled back in May 2024. Consumer price index declined to 3.3% annual. So you're 1.3% higher than what you want to be, but you're down from 3.4% in April. So you have a point, you know, 1% decrease, and that's good news. And, you know, housing inflation has been stubbornly high. CPI data is likely welcome news for Federal Reserve officials who may see it as evidence they can soon cut interest rates. Again, inflation is too high. Uh, there's not been any decreases. And, you know, when you read this, by the way, you know, they show food is coming down as 2.1%. But then, I'm sorry, 2.1% inflation for food. Um, but when you actually read it, you know, I don't know if you can actually read that or not. Juices and drinks up 19.5%. Hot dogs up 7.3%. Bacon up 6.9%. Sugar up 6.4%. Uncooked beef roast 6%. Pork chops, which is, all right, well, I guess they're good. It can be good. 4.6. Dried beans and peas and lentils, 46 So they give you food, but then when you continue to go down the list of food, it shows way higher interest rates than 2%. Electricity up 6%. Admissions, to sporting events up 21.7%. I guess they can charge that. I mean, I guess what's 20 bucks on top of 100 bucks? I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't do sporting events, frankly. Video discs and other media. I don't know who buys discs anymore, but that's up 20%. Motor vehicle insurance up 20%. I made a video on how Geico tries to try to raise my rates by 40%. Um, and yeah, I could afford it. But just the point of just enough and of enough of enough of just being ripped off from every flipping angle. I went and I got new insurance. They wanted to charge me $250 a month. I found somebody to do it for $130 a month. Same coverage. Motor vehicle repair up 10%. Uh, there was another report the other day that um, in America, you know, used cars are the highest ever on record because people don't have money or don't want to spend the money to go buy a new car. So they're holding on to their old cars. Rent a primary residence up 5.3%. And, you know, food inflation has fallen back really sharply, you know, but again, it's still price increases. They're not saying deflation, which is what we want, right? Um, Housing inflation has fallen. It's down from a peak over 8% in March 2023 versus what we have now, which is 5.3%. So the issue is, is that, okay, fine. Let's say it was $100 that you were paying in rent, and then it went up by 8% in March of 2023. So now you're at $108 versus another 5.3% on top of that. So now you're at $113. So the price or cost of rent never went down. It's not like you found somewhere else to go and rent at a cheaper price. Your rent just continued to go up, just it hasn't gone, continued to go up as much. So what's the solution to all of this? The solution to this uh, I take that back. Let me make one other bullet point, including a 9.3% reduction for used cars and trucks. Airline fares are also down 5.9%. So that's what we want, right? We want prices to go down. Do you want to spend $100? Do you want to spend $50? Or do you want to spend $150? Of course, if you're buying something, you want to pay as little as possible for it and get the best quality as possible. Unfortunately, we're in America. Quality is not very good on a lot of stuff anymore. But Basically, what's the end result of this? The end result is whether we have President Biden or we have President Trump in November of 2024, inflation is going to get worse. Uh, interest rates are going to go down and the price of gold is going to go up. The price of silver is going to go up. The price of oil is going to go up. The price of major commodities are going to go up. They're pulling back right now, but they're going to go up. They have no choice but to go up. It makes no other sense whatsoever. And 
you need to position yourself uh, so that you can capitalize on that. You know, if you need to bulk buy stuff, you can do that. There was an article I read about it. I forget what it's called. Um, it's when you go out and buy in bulk now so you don't have to pay more later. The, yes, that's a way of doing it, but you really want to be able to profit from it. And the way you profit from this fiasco of government deficits, of, uh, you know, a, a government that has no care uh, in basic economics or finance or about the country for that matter, in my opinion, other than a few of them, you need to really make sure that you and your family are going to be safe. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you have a great rest of the night and thank you again for watching.